We got Dave in India. Presence of hologram and brain ports points towards God reality. Why can't I get a serious goal? <laughs> is this is this real? Hello. Dave? Hey. Yes. I was afraid so. Okay, that, go ahead. That's my... So my first question is, would you consent to the point that there is a hologram in your brain? Uh, not without evidence. I probably, probably not, but if it turns out you meant like hologram means like neurons or axons, then I'd be like, ah, oh, you got me. That term usage, but yeah, I think the concept that you're going with, no. I would say that the neurons are producing the hologram. Oh, man. Yeah, but... Yes, we can visualize things in our brain. Uh, some of us can. I have a really hard time doing it. Um, so what? Yeah, how does this point towards God God reality, whatever that yeah, is? Yeah, let me, let me give you a picture. Let me give you a complete description of my experience. Is that fine? Sure. Uh, oh, wait, is this a personal experience? Yeah, because I was going to say, if it's personal, I don't care. I really don't. I really don't. It's not going to do anything for me. It's okay. necessarily first person it's to you. Fact. It's the scientific fact. What, what is your personal experience? Just tell me the fact. It's an experience. No, it's not a fact. Your interpretation it's of the fact. It's an experience that led me yeah, to a fact. Okay, just what's the fact? Here's what I'm saying. Imagine a valley. It's and there's head. a bridge connecting on top of it. Can't understand what you said. Interhemispheric there... fissure. At the top of your head, yeah. you have interhemispheric fissure, which is a split, which is an opening present at the top so of what? the brain. This, uh, we can visualize so anything you describe. How does this get, get to how the does point. This, yeah, how does this get to God? I don't care. No, so li listen to me completely. <laughs> Guys, uh, I'm going to hang up on you completely yeah, in a minute. I, I'm getting I, really I, frustrated. I can visualize anything. Go from the visualization to getting to God. And I, Because if you're going to claim that I'm visualizing God, I'm going to say no. It's just a picture in my head. So it's not going to get you anywhere with us. So assume that we have visualized whatever it is and get us to God. Please. Is he still there? I don't know, Jim. I'm... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought I've... you guys dropped me off. I thought I'm not dropping nope. you. I'm. I'm. I I look, I'm. Me. I'm about to start praying as an atheist for a call, like to actually like just give me something. Like, come on. No, because I. You guys are not listening to my whole content. You're just. I'm that's waiting. I'm. I am waiting. Right, so put the we, sixty we, seconds on yeah, the clock. You have <laughs> interhemispheric. You have interhemispheric fissure at the top of your head, which is a physical location in your brain. There is an opening. Nerves pass through on top of it. They carry the blood. The holograms, like valley, project from the bottom to the up, and the hologram is a result of the electrical circuit of your brain. So you have images, just, and you have you, emotions. We've, Thought, we've already emotions. agreed that we can visualize things. Yes, get us to God. No, but so this part of reality, I didn't know, right? Dave, it's, Dave, it's we, so get it. we get it. Your brain, we get it. Dave, we get it. Your brain makes you see stuff. We get it. What else? We get it. Your brain makes you see stuff. Yes, How does that get me to God? <laughs> If I if I become synchronous, if I become synchronous with universal energy, wouldn't that lead oh. me to Oh God? Jesus fucking Christ, dude. <laughs> universal what? Uh, it's, I swear it's all my spiritualist friends calling me back for like not being an atheist now. <laughs> They're just trying to get back wow. at me. It's just yeah. <laughs> Getting in sync with the universal energy. Right. And you can't be yeah. serious right now. Like, what does that mean? Just would I'll give you, you 15 you seconds prefer, to tell me what that means. I predict you won't game, be able to tell me what it even means. Play, if you're playing a game, would you prefer your inner oh dialogue to be curse word or would you prefer it to be something saintly? I have no idea what you're fucking even getting to. Oh my God. Uh, Dave, I'm going to give you one more chance, man. Just one more chance. Bridge the gap 
from me seeing stuff with my brain and like you know there's a necessary relation between like this neural state and the tree that i see and so i see the tree and then there's whatever you think hologram stuff going on great we grant it all all the toys are for you to play with how does that follow to god to a mind that exists alone that creates the entire world how does that follow crickets because my experience and right. that main my don't give a not damn about your experience right see the problem with your experience is that i'm a part you of you then have that you then have to demonstrate how you came to a supernatural conclusion from any experience you had you've got to walk us through that so we grant your experience was real to you big fucking deal get us to god everybody by the way everybody has experiences by the way you're not privileged it's not like, oh, I had an experience and it was a God thing, so I don't actually have to do the work to show you. Because it's an experience, I get off, I get the experience card, I get off free, I don't have to explain anything. That'd be awesome. I would just say, oh, I experienced naturalism, so naturalism is true. <laughs> wow, that was so easy. I should do that from now on. Instead of actually caring about my beliefs and defending my beliefs, updating my beliefs when I have a more defensible belief, which is a good thing, by the way. You are being a coward. You're not even willing to talk about your belief. I can just tell that you fear some, some way that we just break it down and then all of a sudden it comes collapsing. That's the only hypothesis that I have that explains why you're not willing to just give me the entailment. You just keep saying a bunch of gibberish. It's so frustrating, Dave. Yeah, you're right. Um... I do agree with you guys. Uh, there isn't much meaning in life, but if you want to survive. Oh, Jesus Christ. We never said that. Yeah. So l l let, me, let me try this, right? I had an experience while I was in the Army. A buddy of mine, we're getting ready to go take a test, a practical test on the radar we, work, uh, we were being trained to work on. He said we were both kind of bored because um, it wasn't a difficult test. And he vague, says some vaguely Latin-esque words, waves his hands around, and then says, I've cursed our radar. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever, dude. <laughs> and we go to the radar. He flips the power switch, which is, of course, the first thing we want to do. Well, the dish starts to turn backwards and groan really, really loudly. Now, that's not supposed to happen. By the laws of physics and everything we understood about electronics, this dish should never rotate backwards shouldn't be shaking like it is and shouldn't be groaning like it is. There's just no way it should be doing that. And so figuring that something was really wrong, we slammed the off switch. Our instructors came over and said that wasn't supposed to happen. And we're like, okay. So we continue to investigate with our instructors. We have no idea why it happened. This is a, an actual real personal experience. I have witnesses if I can contact them. I've been in touch with my, my army buddies in decades. Should I assume that our radar was infested with a demon, as my friend said, as my buddy said? Should I assume that? And if so, under what circumstances should I assume that the supernatural is real, right? I can't conclude that he actually did that because I have zero good evidence that the supernatural is real. So I can't come to a supernatural conclusion for this, right? All I can do is go, I have no idea why the radar did that. And neither did my instructors. None of us did that. And that radar never did it again as long as I was there. Do you see what I'm saying about trying to go from here's my personal experience to the supernatural explanation? I don't, I, I can't get, I can take any experience you want. And all I need to know is how you get to a supernatural explanation. Because I don't have sufficient good evidence to take any personal experience you might have and conclude it's supernatural. So I want to know what evidence you have to conclude what you experienced was supernatural. Yeah, but, you know, he, life is meaningless because we're, you know, atheists. Oh, stuff. yeah. Oh, he left. Never mind. Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah I dropped. Oh, sorry. I should. Yeah, I dropped it. <laughs> I wouldn't have gone on the story. I was going to let um, you go. I no, I mean, he can he can listen. It's archived. It's there. So yeah. there's no no issue there. Um, with that, that, that's, that's why we don't care what the, the personal experience is, right? My whole story was completely pointless because I have no way to conclude that it was supernatural. But I tell this story because when I tell that story to Christians, they, none of them want to, want to say that, that I should conclude that demons exist 
or that it even possessed the radar, right? They don't want to come to that conclusion. Sure. And it's like, well, why not? Well, because it's a negative, right? But if we propose that if somebody chops off, uh, gets their head chopped off and they come back and their head's back on, that we should take that as evidence of the supernatural as well. And it's like, no. 